Hi, I'm Mary Malachami, and my character presentation is on Meredith Gray. I attached a PowerPoint for you to view to go along with me discussing her personality. So on slide two, I wanted to give you some background knowledge on Meredith Gray. She's a fictional character on the medical drama series Grey's Anatomy. She has been in the main character on the show for the past 15 seasons. She started the show as an intern, and now she's the head of general surgery at Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital. She's the daughter of the famous Ellis Gray and a mother of three kids named Zola, Ellis, and Bailey. The best theory to describe Meredith's personality is the social learning theory. On slide three, I define social learning theory. Social learning theory is also known as social cognitive theory. It emphasizes the role of the environment and experiences. Personality is learned through associations, consequences, and observations. It also states that thoughts influence their behavior. Slide 4 compares two characters of the show that Meredith was able to observe and later imitate them. The two characters are Ellis Gray and Richard Weber. Ellis Gray is Meredith's mother. Meredith and her mother did not have a good relationship and she died early on in the show. Meredith observed her mother's old surgical tapes and was able to imitate them, um, imitate um, the methods and strategies her mother used into her own surgeries. She also observed her mother being extraordinary. Her mother always reminded her many times that to be anything but ordinary. So she emanated her mother's ways and won the Harper Avery Award years later. Richard Weber was the chief of general surgery for the majority of the show. He was also more of a father figure to Meredith since her father really wasn't in the picture. He taught her everything she knows today in and out of the surgical room. Her uh, Meredith observed and learned under Richard from the first day of her internship. Richard's teaching method is to observe one surgery, do one surgery, which ties in really well to Meredith observing and imitating Richard's surgical methods. On slide five is self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is when people's thoughts affect their behaviors and your ability to perform a behavior. High in self-efficacy increases the likelihood that the behavior will occur. Self-efficacy is affected by past performances, performances by others, social persuasion, and physical emotional states. Slide 6 reveals Meredith is high in self-efficacy. On this slide, I listed the predicted outcomes of someone who is high in self-efficacy, and then listed some of Meredith's outcomes. Some predicted outcomes are that it reduces vulnerability to being victimized, adapted immune function when under stress, and more effective to cope with pain. Meredith out Meredith's outcomes are that it helps her work well under stress. An example of this is in one episode, she held a bomb inside of a patient's chest cavity, and if she moved at all, the bomb would have gone off and killed everyone. Another example is that she distracted a gunman while her best friend did surgery on her husband, all while having a, a miscarriage. She is also able to cope with pain and trauma better than many of her co-workers in the show. She is one of the fastest to bounce back after being in a traumatic plane crash, and it was when it was time to get on a plane again months later, she handled the situation fairly well and helped other survivors handle their first time back on a plane. Slide 7 is about locus of control. The locus of control are thoughts about how much control one has over life events. A question to ask is, is does behavior change accordingly once a behavior has been reinforced or punished? If the answer is yes, then that person has an internal locus of control. If the answer is no, then they have an external locus of control. Slide 8 reveals that Meredith has an external locus of control, which means her location of control is external to self and relies on luck, chance, and fate. An example of this is Richard getting her into the internship program at the hospital even though she wasn't originally supposed to be in the program. She also doesn't, ha doesn't see or believe in a link between her behavior and the consequences, like helping a coworker cut an LVAD wire or committing insurance fraud. She doesn't see, she doesn't feel she is to blame for her actions. She believes she has a reason she does what she does. She helped cut an LVAD wire to help a patient get a new heart that we and he would have died without getting one, and she committed insurance fraud by putting her daughter's name on another girl's insurance form so the girl would get cancer treatment and surgeries. 
The last slide is the external locus of control out outcomes. Meredith repeatedly does reckless things without thinking of the consequences. I put a video, I put a link to a video for you guys to watch, which talks about a couple reckless things she does, along with her lashing out at a man on a panel who was de well, who was determining if she would lose her license. The outburst in the video could very well have made her lose her license. Another outcome is that she is less likely to experience dramatic drop in life satisfaction after widowhood. After her husband died, she threw herself back into her work. She thrived in her research and won a prestigious medical award called the Harper Avery Award. She is also very content with her sisters and children. The last outcome I'd like to talk about is that someone with an external locus of control has lower levels of perceived exertion during workout. An example of this is that she performed the world record for the longest surgery by a single doctor. When she was finished with the surgery, she told everyone that she felt nothing but victory.